Welcome to ASMTG and day three of the streamer kumite, something I absolutely have been having a blast with, so I hope you've been enjoying it well. Each round, very unique, really fun, and today is no different. So for round three, we're gonna do pretend there was rotation. So typically a set is only legal for two years, but they changed that on us, and now they're good for three. So in September, we didn't get any rotation, but we're gonna pretend the eight of us like we did, and we're gonna craft our best standard decks from that information. So Dominar United moving forward is what we're able to play with with our decks and in this round we have two undefeated competitors and as luck would have it we're going up against each other so like i said in round three the first matchup you're going to see is going to be man to man against myself and somebody's o has got to go in this one so we're only going to have one undefeated competitor going forward after this round then second up we're going to have mythic mike going against mtg brew lab the third match of the day is going to be max damage against Mithros. And to finish off round number three, we're going to have Sleeveless going up against Hand of Justice. Once that final match is over, we have our little outro where we're going to update this leaderboard. I'm going to give the match of the round and we're going to talk about what's coming up in tomorrow's video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. Round three, fight. All right, we're underway, and unfortunately, I am on the draw, and not with a strong hand, so... Oh, early mulligans? Oh, this is a for-sure mulligan. <laughs> it's, like, it's cl Mine's a little close. We'll, we'll go ahead and keep it. All right, we could live with this. We'll go ahead and keep this one. So, oh, oh yeah, that's right. I have to get rid of a card. I, I don't want to do that, though. <laughs> uh, I guess it's going to have to be that. I always give the friendly mulligan hello. So everyone needs a friend <laughs> when you take a mulligan. Uh, at least I'm on the draw. The mulligan doesn't hurt quite as bad when you're on the draw, but right. you, know, you hate to see it. All right, I'm hit you with this restless prairie, man. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, we'll, we could wait a little bit until I really see what you're playing, but I would love to hear your thought process of when you wanted to make the deck as far as pretend there's rotation. So now we only have six sets instead of the 10. Like how, how you kind of figured out what deck you would play with. Cause for me, what I did is I looked at every set. Well, what was the archetype of this? Oh, I don't like mana ramp. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I pretty, I pretty much just looked at like some, um, I don't know, I, I pretty much looked at a lot of my decks and then just kind of tried to cut out. Like, um, I pretty much like, would just like, you know, filtered out, you know, Nuka Penna, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, basically, I don't know. Like, it, I, I just kind of, like, landed on this. I felt like this was the least amount of things I had to cut. So, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm not gonna attack, because I know that Virtue, I don't know if you're playing, like, uh, the, the Virtue card, and I'm not really an aggressive deck, so I'm just gonna chill. I'm gonna miss my land drop, unfortunately, but. Okay. So, we've got the Zephyr. Okay, okay. Question is, do I bounce it? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, three mana, so I'll have to... I'm actually not bouncing. So, for me, what I did is I looked at every set. And you know how every set kind of has a theme, right? Mm -hmm. you, you have Toxic for one. You, you have... Uh, they're skipping my head, whatever. But one of the themes was soldiers. And I was like, wait a minute. The soldier deck literally loses nothing. And so I was like, so I had all these other ideas. But then when I kind of went through it that way, I was like, oh, I think I'm going to have to go that route. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, soldiers, soldiers hasn't been hit too badly. Yeah, so there's literally, in my opinion, there's not a single card it lost. All right, right that's, that's, sure. that's going to help that mulligan now. Get these cards back. For sure. Let's see here. I do have... I am playing with some something a little a little funky. So let's see if I want to use this or not. Hmm. Don't know if this is going to benefit me that much, but I am... I think I'm going to have to use this now. Better now than, than later. Mm. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. See, so yeah, because I'm super curious about your deck right now. I, I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing Selesnia, but then I see a mana ramp. So, and that does some crazy combos as far as finding things too. So I am all over the place with yours. I saw that first land. I was like, okay, a Selesnia counter deck. And yes, ooh, oh, okay. Unfortunately, okay. not for me. So I know that Convoke's going to come back anyway, but I do have a way, despite it being Selesnia, 
where I can kind of clear the board. Unfortunately, this Restless Prayer is going to kind of do me in, but I think we got yeah. we got to stall. I think I got a better late game, so we're just going to have to stall. Okay. <laughs> well, you did miss a land drop, so I know I'm going to be swinging in here. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you three attack, please. Three, one, two, three, four, five. No convoking of the nine. I don't, well, I should get real. Yeah, see, I, I don't want to convoke just because I feel I'm a little ahead on board. And because your deck is all over, I just saw removal. You do have white. Anytime I see white, I'm worried about sunfall. So it's like, do I convoke and rebuild <laughs> the deck and not get any damage in? Or do I sit here and yeah. hold back a little bit? Especially because you got your mana ramp. Next, okay, another soul partition. Okay. Like, I let this through. Can't lose my little raccoon. All right, we're going to pass. I think I could start just using the officer's ability, find some more cards. It does worry me, though, that you have a bigger late game. So I'm afraid you have some big combo at the end, and I'm just obliterated. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I do have some combos. Nothing in my hand right now. So I got to just figure out what's the best sequencing here. I think it's just going to be... Well, you mentioned a counter as well. So I have to... I'm not running cavern, so... Hmm... I think this is probably just the best move. I want I kinda almost want to keep the Bramble just for just for this, but hopefully Ooh. we don't see oh, a counter. Reach. I am I do not like reach. Okay, I do not have a counter. I was holding up a little bit of This will kinda help with the uh the mana sources. Yeah. Here. I know that Convoke can come back, but now what it costs? Eight? Okay. Okay, gotta go this way, Just and I'm just gonna try and push damage. Yeah, for sure. That Harbin is nasty. Yeah, All I right, thought I was about to go swinging in like crazy. I wasn't expecting a, a freaking Reach creature coming out. <laughs> yeah, this, the Reach really does help. Someone I'm to take in here. 100%. Okay. Gotta try and find a way to get rid of this Harbin. Down to five. Two, four, five, six mana up. I think the Harbin is the biggest problem. I should have saved one of these soul partitions, huh? Yeah, you used oh. to. I'm, I was wondering, I was like, how much more? That's a Harbin, right? That's the thing you just keep in the hand. You wait into that last moment. I mean, of course you could play it as a two drop, but it's just so brutal. If you already have those five soldiers out, drop it immediately, get that attack in. Yeah. So right now I do have, I think, I think that's gonna be about it. I do have my, I do have some big things, but nothing that can block the. So I guess I'll kind of like elaborate on like my choices here. Yeah. So I, I am, I'm actually running f uh, four Eternal Wanderers. That's kind of like that my. That was uh, the okay. I don't, yeah, because I don't, I don't have Sunfall because I am running creatures. So yeah. I do have the Eternal Wanderer. So if you go wide, that's kind of my way to kind of like wipe the board, and then I keep my boring collects. So I am also running Nissa, which is pretty phenomenal versus like um. Um, what should we call it? Um, control and whatnot because they have a hard time. Oh, you have the protection of those tears anyway. Oh yeah, yeah I, so I just I, drew I, it. <laughs> yeah, even even so, that was that was gonna be lights out. But yeah, so the interesting thing was my opening hand had a. Uh... Oh, I actually, sorry, when I mulliganed, I had to protect the negotiators. I was like, oh, let's get rid of that. I am only running two in this one. And then luckily okay. I drew that little one other one. But I just, yeah, I just drew that. But so I was worried because sometimes, like you were saying, you have a lot of creatures, but you're not running Sunfall. Sometimes no, people, no Sunfall. like when your deck is a little slower, they still will run that depopulator Sunfall because it's like, all right, if you aggro ramp me, fine, I clear the board. Then I do my bigger things. So any, like, the way your deck was built, I was so fearful of it, and so I didn't come out, I guess, as aggressive as I could potentially. Oh yeah, so even but, if I did have, because I, I was banking on the Eternal Wanderer, yeah. so even even if I did draw, you had the counter anyway, but yeah, uh, Zora's Soldier's probably going to be 
a force to reckon with even post for, uh, rotate. Oh yeah, and so that was the thing is I was like, after I looked at everything post rotate, I was like, oh, this deck only loses a couple cards. This one only a couple cards. Oh, toxic yeah. is good, doesn't really lose anything. And then as I went through each set, I was like, oh my gosh, soldiers, it's literally the exact same deck, no changes at all. It's already a top tier deck. I was like, all right, I'll feel like a little bit of a cheater. I'm playing this one. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Maybe I should run a few Sunfall, but I think, I mean, typically the, I have kind of play tested a few times, but the Eternal Wanderer has been pretty good. And then once you have that, because I, the reason I like Nissa and Eternal Wanderer mm -hmm. is because again, it's good against board or um, like creature decks because you do, you can wipe the board and you also like control has a hard time with Planeswalkers. They can exactly. get rid of anything else. So Nissa and the Eternal Wanderer is also good against control. Nissa so is always a nightmare against those control yeah. decks. They, they have so much trouble with it. There's constant creatures coming out. And then, mm -hmm. believe it or not, that minus one ability of artifacts or enchantments occasionally comes in so huge. A ley line oh, yeah. binding that you try and use oh, yeah. on you. And Oh, yeah. So I yeah, love that I, one. I love Nissa. Well, thank you so much for the match, and good luck to you and the rest of the Kumite. Yeah, it was great. It was great to do this. Hopefully we do this some other time. And yeah, thank yeah. you. Round three, fight! Boogie time, boogie time. That looks amazing. If I put this strand portal down on white. Let's go, Lone Fox. One land and we got it. One land and we got it. For the ooh, one, two, three. Does not get any better than that. We can draw the land with this if we need to. Also, Paleontologist will get us there. Alright, maybe dinos. It may be dinos. Epic. Just epic, honestly. Um dang 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 let's give him the bag of rats, my favorite. The Hulking Raptor. Ah. Um, so I'm thinking we're just going like this. All right, so I did mess up the mana a little bit. I thought I could get this off, but I couldn't. Well, we are flooding. Like, flooding. He's having a bit of mana trouble, so I'm actually just going to snag this paleontologist.
Let's go. Give me another fight spell, baby. Okay. Well, that's um, Elspeth out of here, unfortunately. But he needs to find an answer to this Anipha Kal pretty quickly. Twelve, seventeen, so it's one off, or it's very short off. Am I dead? <laughs> I can't tell. Still no trample though. Oh, you know. Not too worried. We just keep going face. Goes down to two. We have mana for both drawing a card with the uh, recruitment officer as well as using surge. So. I feel like this one's pretty much just in the bag. Unless he finds a way to give everybody trample right now. I need a fight spell or it's GG. No, I need trample so bad. Uh, dang, he's got just enough, huh? I needed my um, Huntsman. I wonder if I should have just attacked in with it last time. I promise you guys, Archangel Elspeth, most underplayed freaking Planeswalker in aggro decks. It's just phenomenal. Let's give him the real send out. Animpakal with that new enchantment, guys. All of these things entering the battlefield. Do, 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 triggers, triggers, triggers. It's gonna. Boros aggro is back, baby. Like, I'm so freaking excited about it. Round three. Fight. What do you play, Mesli? I mostly do uh, standard best of one, but I, I typically try and play um top decks or other players decks so anything okay. typically that's mythic ranked or better um is kind of yeah. kind of what i do um very cool yeah yeah i really i really enjoy you know playing other people's stuff and um you know kind of showcasing their things instead of doing my own every time or whatever so just try and do something unique i think that's a very cool niche actually uh i dig that um I do a lot of best of three standard, um, slight nice. brewer, 
But more or less, I play tier one, tier two stuff, and uh, I work with another uh, partner on weekly uh, meta videos for standard best of three competitive. Oh, very nice. All right. Whoa! Triple Warden of the Inner Sky. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> 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 to be fair. <laughs> very cool. We'll see how this goes. All right, for this I went with pirates. We'll see how it does. Yeah, I like the pirate stuff. I've I haven't had when I ran it for my channel. I didn't have any luck, unfortunately, with it, which is too bad. Same here. <laughs> Same here. Let's take, see if we get that. Are you running? Uh, is that Boros Convo, Boros Humans, or just like Boros Aggro? Uh oh, that hurt. <laughs> I just forgot about that. Um, this is kind of a rendition of, of, uh, Boros Aggro, one that I ran a few days ago that I really enjoyed. I flipped out some okay. other stuff, and it's a, uh, still has the soldier kind of, you know, All right, pull yeah. in there. Yeah. Very cool. I run, uh, I used to run a lot of Azorius soldiers. Yeah. I am... For the standard RCQ season, I'm, I'm thinking about running Boros humans. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like based the Bor on, Boros humans list. Based on some, based on some stuff I'm seeing in Karloff Manor, I like it too. I've got some stuff coming for it. Yeah, I think the new the new set should be kind of fun. It's definitely different so far. So. Yeah. Anim Pakal, that's a good piece. I love yeah. using that piece. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Transform that to a treasure so I can cast this. There you go. Oh, there you go. Now, Ooh. <laughs> that worked out pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> that did. Let's see here. I gotta think. You need five in. Don't have lethal. Four is hard. I feel like there isn't. Oh, I can tap three untapped artifacts too, so I can do this. Mm -hmm. Forgot about that one actually. That might help me a little bit. up here with roaming thrones here that's good that's good i think that should do it yeah yeah there wasn't enough if i did that i don't have enough mana unfortunately because what I was going to do... Because it hit that, that's... Oh, I still can't pay that because it's sack. Yeah. So I think we can go there for now. Yeah, Ganjo. Yeah, it's still all going to trigger though, which is... Hurts.
Yeah. Good game, man. GG's. Nice. Well, I'm glad pirates worked. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It's, it's a fun deck to pilot when it does well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For it just never hit well for me, but it you got all the uh, the artifacts when they keep popping off like that, and the plus one plus one makes a huge difference and locking down. I think so too. With the kite I think sail, that, uh, the two drops are very important in this deck. And oh, then, huge! And you get breaches. Breaches is just a good card in general, even without being in a pirate deck. <laughs> Round three, fight. Say a little bit about like you know how our hands are looking. So I'm really happy with my opening hand here. I got some uh, mana to get going. And how about you? You feeling good about yours? Um, yeah, I can keep. All right. You on the play? So let's see. I what's that? I think I'm on the play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. This, this is a fun deck though. I just kind of threw it together. A little gruel uh, dinos list. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just love like what this deck does. Have you had a chance to play it on the ladder at all or not really? I played around with Donos. I didn't have much luck. They just oh, seemed yeah. a little bit too slow and then not yeah. quite big enough against Domain. But now that Domain's like... out of favor, I, mean, I can see them coming back for sure. Yeah. Looks like, oh, you got a nice uh, Toxic deck going here. That's cool. Yeah, not too bad. Oh man, he's got the job on duelist going. <laughs> <laughs> that they're I pretty strong the together. Here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice draw there for me. I picked up an extra land, which is really great. Because now we can go ahead and get the Pugnacious Hammer Skull moving. So bash in for six here, unless he wants to trade. And that I, is know, wrong. I guess like seeing it from your side, I don't know if this is something you would trade with or not. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna take it. Yeah, that makes sense. The duelist is so strong in your deck, that totally makes sense. So now like, especially if you have like that three mana get rid of my guy. <laughs> it's <should be> pretty <laughs> brutal right now. I don't have that one, but my mana is kind of messed up. Let's see. Yeah. So but yeah, I suppose if you just like push him through for like Hexproof green and just like fly through for a ton of <laughs> toxic. That's pretty nasty. It is a pretty quick clock. I don't think I can use that. Can I? Nope. I have to pay for life. Yeah, he's got a yeah. He's definitely you've definitely got a nice board there for sure. Yeah, your trap was gonna be an issue though. Yeah. Well, this is great because then now you're pushing four points of uh, toxic right quick and in a hurry um i think maybe like okay so you, you got me four toxic it's gonna be interesting i think here and oh and you're already powered up on the seed course you can make those things you can make that uh, a three two that's pretty nasty um yeah i think th this double striker is just too dangerous i got to get rid of it so I think the move here is we're just going to push in, see what you do, and try to stabilize a little bit. All right. Yeah. Actually, I wonder about attacking with the yearling, because I think, yeah, you, you definitely be happy to just get that going with, with the chorus, but I think I got to make some, make some moves here. I got to start doing something. <laughs> <laughs> um... So we could block, take out the yearling, that takes six. I think we definitely block here though. It's yeah, basically that makes sense. free. Just, kinda, just like get the free block in. Yeah. Nope. And then like, while you're tapped down with Skrelv, I gotta make use of my uh, trumpet and carnosaur here to get rid of your duelist. Unless you've got like the protection, which would be super nasty. <laughs> yeah. Guess we'll find out. Unfortunately, the C core don't let me play that. Oh, gotcha! Right, because it's yeah. just. Uh, it's right, actually okay. nice with the Carnosaur. You don't get a trigger off a Rod Priest. What's that? Oh what, yeah, because yeah. it's uh, it's it, it doesn't it's not a spell, right? Yep, 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 yep. So let's see. It's still gonna be pretty close though. I mean, because you got you know three toxic right there on the board. I got no blockers. 
four. At least eight. we got a little bit of a game here. We do. Play that. Bought that. Have you run into that uh, that blue green toxic list that uses like the whatever thing that like copies spells and all that nonsense? I heard about it. I was gonna check it out, but I haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. So. How's this one been doing for you? You just been like using this as a kind of grand ladder. Um, I haven't played this one in a while, but uh, Green White Toss it got me the Mythic twice. Oh, nice. Yeah. So put you two seven. All right. Yeah, up to seven. So you definitely be, you're gonna get in two for sure that I can't stop. Um, I suppose unless I hold both my stuff back, but that seems kind of crazy. So you. I suppose you could actually, you could take the six and unless I can push more on this uh, yearling. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have a decent play here. So if I play that, push with both, drop you to one. Yeah, so this is going to be close. I think if you've got some action, it's going to work. But I guess we're going to try to Ooh, see if we can a, make this work here. It's a big attack. I'll have one blocker on your uh, toxic stuff, and if you've got action on your turn, I think I'm still, I think I'm still done. But I gotta mm -hmm. push it here. Yeah, let's see. That eats six, so I have to block the hammer skull. Yeah. Down to one. I guess you, you could block the. I suppose you could block the yearling. No, I think I'd still, I'm still dead that oh, way. Oh no, because it's trample. No, you're totally right. Yeah. That's right. So. So here, if you can like find a way to get rid of my hammer skull or do something. That on green. You got me. I do have a blocker. All these lands, they're the problem. I know. <laughs> just like not being able to use real mana sucks. Yeah, if I just had one land. Um. Oh really? You just just you just need one land. One know? regular land, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, I, I think got... even if you even if you can't kill me, I think like you you still you're not. I nah, I, I don't for sure win next turn. Anyway. You do. Oh, I do. Yeah, because yeah, the scroll and the mites can't block. Right. Oh, that's yeah. right. They'll block. So that that'll give you two. Then you block here. You go to nine. Yeah. yeah. So you need like another. I can't use scroll's ability either. Oh, you, right, because, yeah, you have to pay life since this thing doesn't tap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so, that's a, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, and I got the Destroy Evil and the Tyver Stand in my hand. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. This so literally up, one one regular land would have got me there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How many regular land do you run in this deck, out of curiosity? Uh, so it's just the Sea Cores and the Cavern of Souls, so there's only eight you know, to don't tap for regular mana. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh, and the whole hey, Raptor. Do you run uh, 21 sources or 22? Or like, what's your, what's your like? Uh, yeah, I believe I'm 22. It's pretty 22. split evenly. Yeah. Yeah, I think in this one I run like the um, Cavernous Soul. I don't have the seed cards, obviously, but. I thought about running like Secluded Step or Secluded Courtyard, but, um, Ended up just going to some basics instead. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, close game there. I think, yeah, it came down to the mana. If uh, if you had regular mana, I'd be out of it. <laughs> yeah, good game, man. Welcome back, and what a round. I think so far that was our most competitive four matches we've had in any one of these Kumite rounds. And I got that win, so now I am the one person undefeated. We still got a lot of playing to do, though. Four more rounds to go. Will I be able to keep it? Will I be able to make it to the finals? Only time will tell. Lots of great play. Lots of great competitors still to go against. But for this round, it was really hard. What one do I give the match of the day to? For me, I'm going to have to say it's MTG Brew Lab against Mythic Mike. 
Mike. I thought that game was so fascinating. It constantly looked like Mythic Mike was just going to overpower him, but Brewlab was able to take to the air and just keep getting in, use those chump blockers, and just have enough to finish it off. I thought that match was just so fascinating and so well played. I really enjoyed that one, so that's why that's going to have to be my match of the day for round number three. Now, tomorrow, it's going to be a long one. For round four of our Kumite, we're doing best of three. It's the only best of three round we're going to have out of the seven, just because this thing is probably going to be a really long one. If you love some competitive best of three, yeah, you might stay for the whole thing, but I'm looking at that one probably being an hour and a half to two and a half hours long just for one round on it, but I'm super excited. I can't wait to see the real competitive juices flowing for the best of three. What does everybody bring? How does everybody sideboard? So that's going to be an incredibly fascinating one, and we're going to see if we can keep this streak going. We're 3-0 right now, but we got a bunch of competitors, four competitors nipping at our heels right at 2-1, and one, so we got to kind of keep this streak going. So make sure you stay tuned for the Streamer Kumite round four tomorrow, and until then, never forget, you're an ace.